everyone, welcome back to my channel and welcome to another episode of My Furry Things, aka a little bit of everything, December edition. This is a series on my channel where I talk about my favorite things that I watched or listened last month. So I talk about movies, TV shows, anime, music and YouTubers. I tried to do something with my hair today. I don't know, I just wanted to highlight these little things around my head. Okay, so it's the start of the year, it's January, how come we already ended 2021 and we are in 2022? I don't know, the best of time in this couple of years felt a little blurry. So December was a month that I kind of took to watch whatever I wanted to watch. When it comes to these cases that I watch so many things, I try to pick the ones that I really think that I really enjoy the most so I can talk to you guys about it. Since we got a lot to cover, let's start already and let's start with movies. Okay, so the first movie that we're going to be talking about is Drawbreaker. This is a case of one of those movies that I had in my watch list for a long time and then I just picked to watch it and it was kind of a surprise. I think it's safe to say that this is one of those movies that you can compare it to others that are alike. So this movie is kind of a mix of Mean Girls with Heathers. We got the darkness of Heathers and then we got the Mean Girls... Mean Girls! Literally, it's about this group of Mean Girls. But what I really liked about this movie is that it tackles subjects like image, femininity, status, friendship and the high school system. At least in movies like this, like the way that they present the high school system. It also says a lot about how a woman is viewed, like how the tiniest of actions can label her into something that she's not. I really like that something this dark created this social commentary and it's such a colorful way. The movie is really colorful, the 90s fashion is great in this movie, but overall I think that if you're into these movies that I mentioned, like Heathers or Mean Girls, Jawbreaker is going to be a good choice to watch. Another movie that I watched is just one of those movies that it's so silly, but like it clicks with me and it's Cry Baby, the John Waters musical. It's about this two group of kids. There's the Drapes, where we have Cry Baby and his gang, and we have the Squares, where there's the girl who falls in love with the bad boy. <laughs> the five minutes already settles for you if that's your type of movie or not. For me, it's just the overreaction, the music, just the way that Cry Baby is like his signature of the one tear in just one eye. It's so over the top, it's so quirky, I guess we can put it that word to this movie. Man, it's just the dialogue in this movie, I can't. There are some times where we're so embarrassed by what they were saying because it's just like, obviously normal people don't talk like that and you're just listening and being like, oh my god, you're really saying this. No wonder we're together, honey. I'm an orphan too. You are? Yes. And orphans have special needs. There is a scene that you're kind of seeing the intimacy of the characters, let's put it like that, and you kind of feel like you're invading the moment and you're just like, okay, uh, apparently I'm in the middle of you guys. I, I just felt like that. You see it, you see it, you see it, you see it. You see how I'm reacting already? So you can kind of see how this movie can be for you. You just, that's kind of movies that you know it's silly, you know that it makes you laugh, and you just go with the flow. So about the musical numbers, I have to say that my favorite will always be Please Mr. Jailer, that song is just amazing. <laughs> I can't help it but perform and sing whatever it comes. But also doing time for being young, it's really fun. I watched this movie for the first time when I was around 13, 14. In that time I couldn't understand really some things. I love the musical aspect of it, but then now watching it and understanding the comedy, I don't know, it just made 10 times better. I'm really happy that I revisit and then now I know that it's a staple movie whenever I need a laugh. As everyone, I went and watched Spider-Man No Way Home. I really got the chance to go to the theaters to watch it. I chose a time where there wasn't going to be much people in the theater. I got lucky when it comes to that. I went with my friend, we had a blast. Whatever the things that started to happen that would surprise people, people would be like, oh, that's what's so fun to go and watch a Marvel movie in theaters. 
because the fans are really excited to watch these movies. You know, for me, I like the movie, but it didn't really connect it in some of the emotional parts, like a scene that happens before the final climax. I don't know, it really didn't touch me deeply, as for some people did. But when it got to the end, that final battle and everything happened, that really, I felt it. There was no way that you couldn't feel that because it's just, oh my god. It was a fun experience to go and see in theaters. I'm happy that I got to. I also watched Encanto. The thing that I most like about this movie were the musics and like I wrote in my letterbox review, it just has a lot of fun things in here, has a good message. But Coco still takes my heart. I know that everyone's favorite performance probably is We Don't Talk About Bruno. I've been listening to that song a lot and of course it's really good. Like it's so catchy. But my favorite performance of the whole movie still is the introduction song of the Family Madrigal. It's just so fun. She presented all these characters and all of their gifts. So I really like that part, it just, it really sets you in the movie and you're like, oh, so this is the family by it again, so now I'm not so lost, now I understand who is who and what is their gift and what it matters. It has a good message, it's a fun, lighted, hard movie, and I watched it with my dad, so it was fun. Okay, last in movies, an honorable mention that I watched was The Map of Tiny Perfect Things. It is a good addition to the coming of age genre. It has to do with time loop, and I really like both of the characters. I think that it's a good recommendation. TV shows. A TV show that I have to talk about, it's The Great Season 2, because... It was great. <laughs> the great? It was great. Yeah, what a fun joke, right? <laughs> this second season improved so much on me liking the characters. As weird as it sounds, I do like Peter now. I didn't like him at all in season one. But now he really is just a character that you kind of see why he is the way he is. And you kind of are seeing that he's trying to break those molds of what he was in season one, but it's really hard for him to do it. And you just kind of start liking him. It's so weird because he, he's not really exactly the best human being. In season one, of course, we like Catherine. I really like her journey and in here, just kind of not being able to hide her feelings for Peter. It's just, oh my God, I get you girl, because if I were you, I don't know if I would really like that, like Peter, but like, I do now. And you are the Empress, so that complicates things because there's this thing of power. For me, in this show, I always liked Orlo. I really missed him in this season, he doesn't get much attention, but yeah, he was my favorite character for a moment. I thought that maybe Orlo and Catherine would be together, but then they introduced her love interest in season one, and then I knew that no, they're just friends. I have two honorable mentions in TV shows. Let's start with the long title that the show has, that it's High School Musical, the musical, the series. I still think they could come up with a better title for the show. Of course, I went to watch this because Olivia Rodrigo, we are kind of so into the Olivia Rodrigo era. Her album is so great. So I was like, okay, I kind of want to see her acting. So I went and watched it. And this might be an unpopular opinion, but from the three high school musicals, I didn't rewatch them in a long time, but I remember liking the third one the most. It has Can I Have This Dance in there, okay? Taking that aside, this is a very teen show. The first season of the show focused more on them during the musical of the first movie, and then we get into all the characters. And the second season, it's another musical, and they kind of grown up. We see them evolved from when they were the first season. I liked how they handled some things in a mature way in second season. About the characters, I'll be honest, I still don't vibe with EJ, like, what he did in the first season, which is not okay for me. But I can't help of liking him with Gina. That couple would be just so cute. I really like Nini's journey, or Nina. Her journey is really cool. Olivia gives this really natural aspect to her character of this dreamer person who wants to do these things and challenging herself. And Ricky is another character that 
kind of don't like it too. The, the boys characters in the show just, they really are teenage boys. I will defend Carlos every day. I love that character. If you can be like the mother of one of the characters, I will be the mother of Carlos. I will protect that kid. And when it comes to couples, like I said, EJ and Gina, they're really cute, but I really love Ash and Big Red's relationship. The other honorable mention is the sex lives of college girls. I think that it's a show that has a lot of potential to grow. I still have to kind of grow in like how I feel about the characters. I don't really love the four girls. I like them, but each situation that they go through, I think that it's interesting to follow. I think that if you are into the shows where you focus more on like college stories, this is a good pick. Anime. So about anime, I finished two series. One of them, I'm just gonna say the name, but I'm saving for a video that is coming where I'll talk about it in more depth. It's, it's My Senpai is Annoying, it's a slice of life about adults and their work life. It's really cute. Now the other anime that I watched was the Aqua Top on White Sand. We have the story of these two girls who have dreams. One of them kind of has her dream crushed right at the beginning and the other is still in the process of getting her dream crushed. And I know it sounds bad you saying like, oh, their dreams are getting crushed, but like, it's just something that once you start watching, you understand better. They find new dreams and it's just a really interesting sight when it comes to like, Aquarians and how they work and how the people who work there love their job they love the sea life and all that comes with it and the two protagonists are great to follow since this anime is 24 episodes we have the first half and the second half when you get an anime that is like 24 episodes long and you decide to watch it all at once it can be really easy to get tired out so I really recommend for you to watch in little bits but it's up to you music I just want to talk about the single because I love it so much and is this song that the regrets released that's called You're So Fucking Pretty. I stayed almost the whole month of December listening to this song. It really was my new favorite song. It just, I listened for the first time and I was like, this is so my jam. This is so me. I love that song. I love the lyrical content. I love the beat. I love the way that Lydia sings. And I even came up with this little dance concept that I posted on Instagram. I wanted to do it, so it's there. <laughs> I already talked about the regrets here on the channel, but in particular, if you like more of these ballad songs, more of these slow songs, you're so fucking pretty, it's amazing. What I'm excited for... The only thing that I had said I was excited for, it already released its first episode and it's Euphoria season 2. We are in the Euphoria season and we are so here for it. <sighs> okay, so those were my favorite things from December. I know it was a lot. I know it's a lot to take in, but I hope that you got something out of it, something got your interest and you got excited to go and watch it, to go and check it out. That's it for now. <laughs> Thank you for watching. Thank you for being here. Thank you for clicking on this video and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.